Well, hello, Brother David here from Salisbury, North Carolina, Renewed Covenant Fellowship, welcoming you to another broadcast live from our home office here, and we're ready to get into the Word. We welcome you, and we hope that you will join us uh, in the Bible study tonight. Uh, behind the camera, of course, is my wife, Miss Sharon, and we appreciate her always being faithful to the ministry and helping out uh, to punch buttons whenever she needs to do so. Amen. Uh, we want you to share this to your page. If you're uh, not a subscriber to our YouTube channel, please be a subscriber to our YouTube channel. Renewed Covenant Fellowship, Renewed Covenant Fellowship is our YouTube channel. And then on Facebook, those of you that are watching by way of Facebook, share this to your page and uh, share this with your friends. Hello, Miss Miss. Leona, appreciate you joining us tonight, and uh, we hope that uh, Father Richly blesses you. This is a special, special message tonight, and, and I want to try to get as many people on this as possible. Um, uh, we are coming up to uh, uh, what's known in our society as Halloween, and, and I really want to focus on this. We just got finished with Sukkot, had a great Sukkot, Feast of Tabernacles, uh, a wonderful, wonderful time, eight days, and um, I came away smelling like smoke, but it was wonderful. Campfire every day, cooking on the campfire, spending time in the Word, singing, uh, uh, fellowshipping with other of, of God's people, spending time doing what the Father has commanded us to do. It was, it was great. But now we're coming into a very, very, very uh, spiritually wicked time in our world, not just in America, but in our world. Hello, Brother Jackson, Brother, Brother Doug, appreciate you joining us. Share this to your page. We'll try to get as many people on the broadcast tonight. Uh, this is going to be a very, very, very uh, important message tonight. We're going to be talking about Halloween. We're going to be talking about why believers, true believers uh, that follow Messiah uh, should not practice and participate uh, in this day. And so we want to give folks an opportunity to try to get on. We're going to blow the shofar here in just a minute. We're going to pray. Uh, but I want you to share this to your page. We'll try to get as many people. Invite your friends. Text message them. If you got somebody that you've been trying to reach and trying to talk to about Halloween uh, and the wickedness and the ungodliness of it, then I want you to try to get on the get on your text, get on your phone, call them, tell them to log on, go on to our uh, Renewed Covenant Fellowship page on Facebook. Uh, we're not live on YouTube. We'll, we're recorded on YouTube, but we're live on Facebook and get as many people on. We, we, we want to try to get as many people on tonight so that they can hear uh, and see what the Father says in His Word concerning this issue. Okay, now I know there's a lot of believers, uh, there's a lot of Christians, there's a lot of church people that are wrapped up in this. Uh, there's a lot of churches that we used to associate with through the Independent Baptist Movement uh, here in North Carolina that are participating in trunk or treats and Halloween festivals and fall festivals on Halloween night. And, and they, they used to didn't be that way. 25 and 30 years ago before we left uh, to go to Kansas. Things have changed, of course, and we come back and we find uh, uh, a lot of a lot of things have have gone by the wayside. And so, I want to try to get as many people on the broadcast tonight, uh, I, Brother Jackson. I appreciate that. I un understand that you're wor uh, you're working, but uh, share it anyway, and maybe someone else will will, will get a hold of it. Amen. And uh, we want the Father to uh, uh, be glorified, but we want to try to get as many people on tonight so that they can uh, be, uh, uh, be be blessed tonight. Hello, Miss Shelley. Appreciate you joining us. Brother Keith, Miss Sheila, appreciate you being with us tonight. Uh, share this to your page. Invite your friends to come and be a part of this. And we're going to get right into the Word tonight. Okay, so we're going to blow the shofar and we're going to get ready to go. And uh, then we're going to pray and uh, get right into the teaching of the Word. Amen. Now let me see how well I do tonight. It's time to get started now. My wife's holding my dog's ears. And uh, he, he's looking at me, grinning, you know, like a chihuahua does, a chihuahua does. But uh, 
We're glad that you're here with us tonight. Let's pray. Hello, Miss Suzanne. Appreciate you joining us. Share this to your page. We want to try to get as many people involved uh, in the broadcast tonight. We want to get as many people watching tonight. This is a very, very important message, very important topic. We want to talk about it. We want to, we want to get your feedback. We want you to share this. Uh, hello, Brother Daniel. Appreciate you you being being with us. Uh, thank you, Brother Doug. So far, so good. Amen. So let's pray tonight and let's ask the Father's blessing on the broadcast. We pray for wisdom and for discernment. Father, in Yeshua Messiah's name, we pray, may you help us as we teach the word of God tonight. Father, that your word would, would not return void, but that it would accomplish exactly what it set out to do. That you'd be honored and glorified by all that we try to say and do. That you would, uh, Father, uh, touch us with the power of the Holy Spirit and speak through us. Father, in open eyes, Father, that you would reveal truth. And thank you, Father, for your mercy, your kindness. Thank you, Father, for the medium that we have through, through, the, through the Internet and through Facebook. We ask you that you would uh, bless it, touch it with your spirit and with your power, that you would bind every demon of hell tonight. Father, that you'd hold back the gates of hell tonight, Father, and let your word resound tonight. Let your word go forward. And we'll love you and thank you and praise you in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. All right, please share this to your page. Share it to your page. Get as many people on. We're going to be talking about tonight the dangers and the reasons that that followers of Messiah should not have anything to do with this uh, with this holiday called Halloween. And we're going to look at it from a biblical perspective. I mean, I can talk to you about all the historical perspective. I can tell you all the history of Halloween. I can do all that kind of stuff. But if you're not convinced based upon the biblical interpretation and what the Bible says about it, then I'm sorry. There's nothing more than I can say to you. If the Holy Spirit does not speak to your heart and does not open your eyes, there's not a word that I can say that'll change your mind. It's got to be the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to tell you, tell you a quick little story about my wife and I and how we came to this understanding. Of course, we grew up with Halloween in our home uh, and in our family. It was a part of our life. Uh, it was something that we uh, uh, were, were raised in. Uh, we were, uh, I was a Southern Baptist. My wife was raised a Lutheran. Uh, Halloween parties, haunted houses, and things like that was common practice. My wife and I even worked at the Faith Haunted House in Faith, North Carolina. I played Dracula. She laid in the coffin, you know, and we did all that kind of stuff, you know, back in the 80s, uh, late 70s and 80s, and uh, <clears throat> it was in 1986, we had uh, got back in church and had been out of church, been in the military and uh, got out of church and was going to New Hope Baptist Church, and I thank God for my pastor, David Harrison, uh, Brother David and I, we, you know, we, we, we never were perfectly agreed with you know with each other on everything but I thank God for him and for him preaching and, and standing firm and stepping out on a limb and teaching about the dangers of Halloween 1986 October of 1986 I, I, I had been working in the haunted house and, and was in church that day that that Sunday morning and heard him preach on that Halloween message and uh, and I went to work in the haunted house <clears throat> and on Thursday night Thursday Thursday night after I'd heard that message Thursday night was Halloween night and this was in 1986 and I was there at the haunted house and my wife was not there I had left work early I was working at a grocery store warehouse I'd left work early to work at the at the haunted house and uh, about halfway through the night, uh, we took a break, and I went to the dressing room. I was under so much conviction. I got out of my makeup. I got out of my costume. I put, put my street clothes back on. Everybody said, what are you doing? Where are you, where are you going? I said, I'm leaving, and I'm never coming back. And in the parking lot of that haunted house, I, I got down in the gravel parking lot beside my car, and I begged God to forgive me. And I never went back. Never. The problem I see is that Christians and quote unquote Christians and believers have heard this and heard this and heard this, yet they still thumb their nose at God's word and say, well, well, that's not what it means to me. It doesn't matter what it means to you. What does it mean to God? What does it mean to God and what does it mean to God's people? And so we're going to look at this tonight from a biblical perspective. My wife and I, we never went back. We never participated. And I have preached. I've been preaching since 1988. And since 1992, I have preached this message every year but one. 
every year but one since 1992. And I've made some friends and I've made some enemies. But guess what? It's in the scriptures. And so we're going to get right into the word tonight. So if you've got your Bibles, we're going, to, we're, we're going to take it from a biblical perspective. We're not going to really look at the historical perspective. We may talk about it a little, little bit. But the whole thing tonight, we're going to look at what the Bible says. I, because believer, Christian, Messianic, Hebrew roots, whatever you are, you, you cannot show me anywhere in the Bible, nowhere in the Bible, where God approves of participating in this type of activity. Nowhere. But I'm going to show you tonight where he does disapprove and where he commands us not to have anything to do with it. So we're going to start in Deuteronomy chapter number 18 tonight. Deuteronomy chapter number 18. We're going to be kind of going all over the map tonight. So make sure you got your Bible. Make sure you got notes. If you're taking notes. Make sure to share this to your page. We'll try to get as many people on, on tonight need to hear this, especially those that you know are struggling with the truth of Halloween. You know that they're, they're believers or they're professing believers uh, and they're, they're duped and they're deceived. They need to know what, what thus saith the, the Lord God. And so in Deuteronomy chapter number 18, we'll begin reading in verse number 9. Uh, read 9 through 14. Deuteronomy 18, 9 says, When thou art come into the land which Yahweh thy Elohim giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. Thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that makes his son or daughter pass through the fire, or that uses divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer, one that speaks to the dead. For all that do these things are an abomination unto Yahweh. Now, now let me just stop right there. The word abomination means sickening and disgusting, going contrary to God's word. And what was an abomination then is an abomination now. Now, let me, let me say this also. Fundamentalist, Independent Baptist, Messianic believer, listen to me. If 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 homosexuality and lesbianism and the LBD and L, LBGTQ, ABCDFG, whatever they are, if that's an abomination and eating unclean is abomination, this is still an abomination. Amen. And so it says, for all that do these things are an abomination unto Yahweh, and because of these abominations, Yahweh thy Elohim doth drive them out from before thee. He's driving them, he's going to drive them out because of what they do. He says, thou shalt be perfect or complete, complete with Yahweh thy Elohim. For these nations which thou shalt possess hearken unto observers of times, unto diviners. But as for thee, Yahweh thy Elohim hath not suffered thee so to do. Now, when we look at that, we take into consideration what exactly is Halloween. Now, Halloween is the one of the, it, it is the highest holy day of the uh, pagan world and of the satanic church. Highest holy day. Our, our highest holy day is atonement. Um, Halloween is the highest holy day of the satanic church. It is, uh, it is, uh, comes from the word Samhain, S-A-M-H-A-I-N, Samhain. It's, it's, a, it's a day to honor the Lord of the dead. Remember that Yeshua is the Lord of the living and Samhain is the Lord of the dead. And it also is the third of the harvest holidays ending the cycle of harvest. The veil is thinnest during this time. It is an opportunity. Now this, this comes from the pagan, the pagan world, the pagan web, websites. Uh, Shabbat Shalom, Miss, Miss Peggy. Appreciate you joining us. Uh, share this to your page. Let's get as many people on tonight that they can hear this. It's an opportunity to see spirits communicate with the dead and honor ancestors. Okay? Now, when you look at what God says there, what, what Yahweh says there in Deuteronomy chapter number 18, he says there a charmer, verse number 11, he says a charmer, a consulter with familiar spirits or demons, 
a wizard or a necromancer, or those that talk to the dead. This is what they do on, on Halloween night. Now, I know there's a lot of churches and a lot of quote unquote uh, 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 Christians uh, that say, well, we make it an alternative to the day. Don't, 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 don't even show, don't, don't, don't even uh, recognize the day. Consider it as, as November 30th or consider it as, as October 20th. It's just another day. But yet when you do something, you have your truck or treat, you have your, your fall festival, you have your things, because what, what this is, folks, listen, these Christian fall festivals is nothing but a counterfeit Sukkot. It's a counterfeit Feast of Tabernacles. They're what they're doing. Satan doesn't have a new idea in his head. And so what they're trying to do is have fall festival as a counterfeit to what God has told us to do in the seventh month on the 15th day of the, day of the month. And yes, it's a compromise. It is, it is a compromise. And when we look at these things, we're allowing our churches, our quote unquote Bible facilities to participate in the things that come from, from below instead of the things that come from above. And we're allowing the things of Satan, the things of the devil, the things of wickedness and abomination to inhabit not only our churches, but they're inhabiting our homes, they're infiltrating our families, they're infiltrating our hearts, and they're infiltrating our minds. And we're being affected and we're being motivated by demonic spirits on the day that set aside as a holiday for the Lord of the dead. Now, when you look at the scriptures, what the Bible says, it says, says, there shall not be found among you in verse number 10. But in verse number nine, he says, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. <clears throat> now, go back to the book of Exodus chapter number 23. And let's look at Exodus chapter number 23. One verse of scripture, Exodus chapter number 23. You know, the scripture tells us where two or three witnesses, then that settles the matter, okay? So I'm going to give you many witnesses tonight, okay? So Exodus chapter number 23 and verse number 20. And if this don't convince you, then there's nothing that I can do. If the Holy Spirit has not convinced you and the Holy Spirit has not pricked your heart and caused you to question what you're doing and caused you to reevaluate your, your position, there's nothing more that I can do for you except for pray, pray for you. Exodus 23 in verse number 20 says, Behold, I send you an angel before thee to keep thee. Oh, that, well, that ain't it. Hold on a second. Exodus 20. Make sure I got the right verse here. <clears throat> Hold on a second. I think I wrote the wrong verse down. No, that ain't the right verse. 29, 29, 29, 29. Uh, mercy. Don't you hate it when, when you, you mess that up? Exodus 23. Oh, it's 23, 2. I'm sorry. Exodus 23, 2. I had a, had a, a zero there. Didn't, didn't belong. Exodus 23, 2. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Hey, well, my family's doing it. I don't care. Well, my children, they won't understand it. I don't care. Well, my church, you know, my pastor would never deceive me. What does God say? <coughs> what does the Father say about this? It doesn't matter what your pastor says or what your deacon says or what your Sunday school teacher says. And it don't matter what your mom and daddy says. It don't matter what grandma and grandpa think. It matters everything about what our Heavenly Father thinks. If we're true followers of the Messiah and we're true followers of Yahweh and His Word, then we should not have anything to do with this day and with this celebration. Very simple. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Period. All right. Look in Isaiah chapter number five. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter number five. Isaiah chapter number five. My, my wife and I, whenever we learn this, 
you know, we just thought it was, you know, it was cool. It, it was, it was good, good fun. We're just going to have a good time, you know, fun. We did not understand the spiritual implications behind this. We would, had never been taught. We'd never been taught because it's not something that's taught in churches. And the reason it's not taught in churches is because it'll make everybody mad and all of the tithers will go away to another church. And pastors will say, well, I can't, I've heard preachers say this. Well, I can't preach that to my, my people. They'll leave. Then bless God. Don't let the door hit them on the way out. It's time that we stand up for the truth of God's word and take a stand and not bow down. Hello, Allison Petrie Shoe. How are you tonight? Appreciate you joining us. It's important that we focus on the truth of God's word and not be not kowtow to a denomination or, a, or to a religion. The Bible is very clear that we're not to have anything to do with evil or those that practice evil. And that includes Halloween. Now, in Isaiah chapter 5 and verse number 20 and 21, the Bible says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. That is not... All right, listen, that is not a, a good thing. The word woe is a bad thing. Woe unto them or bad unto them. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. We have so many people, so many churches. I mean, I saw, I saw a post today from a church that I knew of years ago when, when we started out in the ministry in 1992. And it was one of the churches that had support, uh, we had started supporting us. Did I lose the feed? I'm still there. I, all right, I didn't lose the feed, but I lost my, my picture. So I'm still on. All right, pray, praise the Lord. Uh, Mr. Turn my, turn, my, turn my camera over right there, if you will. Flip my camera. Flip, flip the screen for me on the on the camera so I can see. Yeah, flip that. Yeah, there we go. Hallelujah. Amen. No, feed, feed's gone. All right. So, I'm, am I still on? Hey, I'm still on. Praise the Lord. All right. Very good. I thought I'd lost you there there for a second. <laughs> so anyway. I tell you what's happening. People are sending me messengers, and they're popping up on my screen, and, and it's 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 throwing everything off. The Bible tells us very clear to woe to them that call evil good and good evil. The Bible is very clear that we are not to have anything to do with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather re, re, refute the. Uh, 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 that's all right, Miss Miss Peggy. That's all right. No worries. The Bible's very clear. God's very clear in the book of Deuteronomy. Go back to Deuteronomy 18. I want to focus on that tonight. I really want to focus on on that. And I know there there are those who'll say, "Well, that's in the law." That's in the Old Testament. You know, you know, we're not supposed, you know, we don't have to do that in the Old Testament. You know, that, uh, that sin of sodomy is still in the Old Testament too. That sin of adultery is still in the Old Testament too. That sin of stealing is still in the Old Testament too. That sin of murder is still in the Old Testament too. Deuteronomy chapter number 18, look again what it, what it says. When you, verse 9, when thou art come into the land which Yahweh thy Elohim giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. Not. Now, why, why are we in such a mess? Well, Hosea chapter 4, verse number 6 tells us exactly why we're in such a mess. Hosea 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We have spent the last last decades, I mean 10, 20, 30, 40 years listening to preachers being brainwashed, sitting on church pews, listening to preacher, uh, preachers rant and rave about little pet peeve things while not dealing with the spiritual issues and the things that affect our homes our families and our country. These are spiritual demonic days and demonic attacks and when we participate with 
those, when we practice with those, when we fellowship with those, we are putting ourselves in such danger of spiritual influence from demonic spirits and, and familiar spirits. So do, do you remember? Do you remember King King Saul? Remember when King Saul went to the witch of Endor and wanted to conjure up Samuel? Dealing with familiar spirits? Remember, remember that? Remember Solomon? Remember what happened to Solomon when Solomon started uh, uh, allowing his pagan false God-worshipping wives to lead him into idolatry and he raised up uh, altars to Baal and Moloch? Uh, these are not good things. These are not good things. And Christians, believers, you need to take a stand. You need to take a stand for your children. You need to take a stand for your grandchildren. Preachers, you need to uh, take a stand in your churches. And, and if you're afraid to, to preach this, then bless God, pack up your bags, get out of the pul pulpit, go get a, a nine to five job and get out of the ministry because you're not worth the salt uh, that's underneath your feet. Do something different instead of standing up there molly coddling people. You need to tell them what the Bible says in love and in patience and give them what thus saith the Lord God. Now, I know there are those who say, well, that's the Old Testament. That's the Old Testament. Okay, well, let's look at the New. Let's look at the New. Go over to Ephesians. I quoted this verse uh, uh, just a, a little bit ago. Ephesians chapter number 5. Apostle Paul. Everybody rises and falls on Paul. They think Paul was, uh, was the Holy Spirit. A lot of people think that Paul rewrote the Bible and rewrote the law. And so Paul's law, we're going to go with what Paul says. Okay, praise God. Amen. Let's go with what Paul said. What Paul say in Ephesians 5.11. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Can, can somebody tell me how many times in the Bible that the scripture says that we can have, that, that, that we can mix dark with light and everything will be okay? It's not in there. We can't mix dark with light. As a matter of fact, what did John say about that? We are children of light. We who are believers and followers of Messiah Yeshua, Jesus Christ, we are children of the light. We're not children of the darkness. We don't need to be having truck or treats and Halloween parties and, and all that kind of garbage. No, it, it is a counterfeit for God's feast that God has laid out for us, what Yahweh laid out for us uh, in, his, in his word. But let's see what John says in 1 John chapter number 1. 1 John chapter number 1. We wanted New Testament. I've given you four witnesses from the Old Testament. Now, now look at what the New Testament says. Paul said there in Ephesians 5, we're not to have any fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. But look at what John says in 1 John chapter number 1. Verse 6. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we're okay. Is that what it says? What does it say, Miss Sharon? We lie. we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Yeshua beside his son cleanses us from all sin. Verse number three of chapter two, continuation says, Hereby we do know we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So the word of God is very clear that we are not to have anything with the unfruitful works of darkness, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. That means not rewrapping it with a different package. Now, somebody help me. This just came to my mind. I thought about it earlier and I forgot to write it down. And, and we, we, I think we looked at this the other day. What is the verse of scripture out there in the, in the Torah that tells us that God does not want us to worship him the way that the other people worship their gods? Isn't that in Deuteronomy? Somebody help help me. Help me. Somebody help me out there. Yes, Brother Paul, the word of the Lord endureth forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. That's right. What, what is that verse of scripture where, where, where Yahweh tells us that he does not want us to worship him the way that the pagans worship? Chapter 12. Deuteronomy? Is that Deuteronomy chapter 12? 
Brother Keith, Deuteronomy 12. Yes, thank you, my brother. Deuteronomy 12, verse number 30. Deuter back to the, back to, thank you, Brother Tim. Thank you, Miss Peggy. You guys are on the stick tonight, amen. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse number 30. Take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them. After that they be destroyed from before thee, and thou, that thou inquire not. Thou inquire not, or thou do not inquire. Let me just re rephrase it. Don't inquire after their gods or their mighty ones, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Thou shalt not do so unto Yahweh thy Elohim. For every abomination to Yahweh which he hateth have they done unto their gods. For even their sons and their daughters they have burnt in the fire. To their gods and to their mighty ones. Whatsoever, well, what things soever I command you observe to do it, thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. I'm gonna tell you what, you cannot powder coat Halloween and you can't Christianize it and spiritualize it. It is a wicked, wicked day. It is the highest holy day. I said this earlier, it's the highest holy day of the Satanic Church. Now I know the Catholic Church has embraced it because here, here's how here's how we got Hall Halloween. Okay, I, I said I wasn't gonna focus a lot on the history, but I, here's how we got Hall Halloween in a nutshell. November the November the second used to be called in the Catholic Church the Day of the Dead. October 31st was the old pagan celebration from the ancient Britain and Gauls celebration to Samhain, Lord of the Dead. And so it was a day that they worshiped and had celebration for Samhain. It's spelled S-A-M-H-A-I-N, Samhain, but it's pronounced Samhain, Lord of the Dead. When the Roman Catholic Church and, and Rome conquered Britain and Gaul, which is England and Galatia, you know, Paul wrote to them Galatians, you know, remember? And, uh, and the Euro Europeans, basically, when Rome conquered them, they Christianized their, their pagan holidays and they had their Samhain Day and the Catholics had their... All Hallows Day, that's, that's what it was called, All Hallows Day, November 2nd. So instead of taking away their pagan celebration, they just backed up their All Hallows Day to November 1st. So November 1st became All Hallows Day. October 31st became All Hallows Eve. All Hallows Eve. And you mix All Hallows Eve with Save Ween and you come up with Halloween. And that's how we got Halloween. Nothing biblical, nothing scriptural, nothing from nothing from from the Bible, nothing from God, nothing at all. It's all pagan. It's all wicked. It's all ungodly. Has nothing to do with God. Now I want you to look in. Uh, let's look in the book of First Corinthians chapter ten. First <clears throat> Corinthians chapter ten. I know I sound like I'm angry. I, 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 I'm, I, am, I am angry. I'm angry with the righteous indignation at preachers and pastors that I knew coming up as a young, young man, as a young preacher, that they've compromised their, their, their spineless, gutless wimps that will kowtow to the, to the crowds and to the, to the offering plates, and they won't stand up and preach what thus saith the Lord God. We, we, yes, Miss Peggy, we should be very angry, very angry that this garbage has hijacked and uh, hijacked our people and we have been so influenced. Halloween is the second most profitable holiday in this country besides Christmas. Halloween. They, they, put out, they put out Halloween costumes. I saw people decorate for Halloween at the end of September. They had Halloween stuff all month long. Decorations, yard decorations. They were selling costumes. I'm going to tell you something. Yes, Yeshua got angry. He, did get, he, he, he did, did get angry. And we need to be angry with the righteous indignation. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 20. 
The Bible says, for, it says, but I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to Elohim. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. You cannot drink the cup of the master and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the master's table and of the table of devils. You can't do it. So there's another New Testament witness to what God said in the Torah. Another New Testament witness of what God said in the Torah, in Deuteronomy, in Exodus, and then what was said in the book of Isaiah and what was said in the book of Hosea. You cannot mix light with darkness. You cannot call evil good and good evil. And you cannot mix or drink from the cup of the master and from the cup of the devil at the same time. You can't, can't do it. You tell me how, how you can do that. And if you can do that, then Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah, was a liar. He's a false prophet. Paul's a false teacher. The Bible is a hoax. Uh, 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 the whole thing is a made up scam. And we just need to live, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we will die. But that is not a fact. You cannot mix light and darkness. You just can't, can't do it. It's like mixing water and oil. You can't do it. Now I want you to look over to, uh, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. And I know people get angry with me when I preach this. Wait till we get to Christmas. Amen. They get, they get mad at me about that too. But it's another one of those, those holidays. While, while I'm thinking about that, now this is going to turn backwards, okay? The way that my, the way that my, my camera is, it'll, it'll look right on the YouTube, but it's going to look wrong on, on yours, okay? So it's backwards. But I want to show you this. This right here is called the wheel of the year, okay? This is the wheel of the year. And you'll see that there's Sewing right there. And then there's Yule. And then there's there's Breed. It's spelled Bri, but it's Breed. That's February the 1st and 2nd. Okay. And it just goes around, around the wheel. Ostara, which is Easter. All of these are satanic pagan holidays that, that we have embraced in our society and we've made Christian celebrations and Christian ho holidays within these months. Okay. You can find this online. I didn't make this up. You go just just type into your to your computer, type in pagan holidays on, on your Google search, and all this stuff will come up. Pagan holidays. That's all you gotta do. Click the images button and all of these things will come up. Nothing hidden. Satan not hiding anything. The devil ain't hiding nothing. He 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 says, we're gonna just take it right inside the church. We're just going to take it right inside the church and we're just going to bring them all straight to hell because they're duped. They're duped. They're, they're like lemmings that's just walking off the cliff and just the blind following the blind. And preachers are standing up there singing, oh, how I love Jesus. While at the same time, they're promoting the works of Satan and the works of darkness. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 11, the Bible says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. The problem is there are a lot of people that are ignorant of his devices because we've been sucked in. Hollywood has sucked us in. Holidays have sucked us in. Flesh and, and demonic spirits have sucked us in. Hello, Brother Baxter. Share this to your page. Get some people on. We need to hear this. Amen. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 14. I told you I was going to give you witness after witness. And remember the Bible only says we only need two or, two or three witnesses. So far I've done giving you about six or seven. 2 Corinthians chapter number 6 and verse number 14. Well, you know, the, uh, Brother David, God never said we shouldn't celebrate Halloween. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He said we shouldn't celebrate Halloween, shouldn't celebrate Christmas, shouldn't celebrate Easter, shouldn't celebrate uh, uh, New Year's Day, all of it's pagan, uh, uh, Valentine's Day, all of that. All of that. All of that. <clears throat> Second Corinthians chapter number 6, verse number 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? Listen to me. I said it before, at, uh, earlier in the, in the teaching time. You can't mix light and dark. 
There's no way. Thank you, Miss Sharon. She heard my voice going. You can't mix light and dark. It's impossible. The Bible says you can't do it. It's not of, not of God. He says, There be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? Let's keep on reading verse 15. And what concord or what accordance or communion has Messiah with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement has the temple of God or temple of Elohim with idols? For ye are the temple of the living Elohim, as Elohim has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their Elohim, and they shall be my, I see, I will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith Yahweh, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith Yahweh Almighty. I wonder how many watching this broadcast have already brought reproach upon the cause of Christ and the cause of Messiah because you have let Satanism and wickedness and demonism infiltrate your home, your children, the minds of your, of your offspring, your heart, the wickedness and the ungodliness and the bitterness and the fighting and everything that comes with all of this. Allowing these things into our house. Let me tell you something. There's not a one of you watching me and those of you that are, are going to watch by YouTube. There's not a one of you that would ever allow a pedophile or a rapist or, or a, uh, a witch to come into your house. You'd never do that. There ain't no way. They'd show up to your door. You'd say, no, nah, no, no. Y'all won't even let a Jehovah's Witness in. You won't even let a Jehovah's Witness in because, you know, they're, they're the devil. You know, you won't even give a chance. You won't even witness to them. But, boy, you'll let them demons in come Halloween time. You'll let all them spooks and goblins and all them, 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 them play witches and toy witches and all those kind of things. And you'll let them things touch you and reach out to you and infiltrate your mind and infiltrate your heart and affect your home. Yeah, it's an infection. It is. And you won't stand against that stuff because, you know, it's fun. It's fun. You know, it's just simple. It's innocent. Well, that's not what it means to me, Brother David. Listen, you can take a cow patty and you can spray paint it gold, but it's still a cow patty. Amen. It, it, may, be a, it may be a gold nugget to you, but crack it open. It's still a cow, cow patty. Listen to me. We need to take this thing serious. We are in spiritual warfare and we are playing games on the battlefield. We're playing games. And the Bible's very, very clear. Come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. We're the temple of the Holy Ghost of God. Yeah, it's like putting lipstick on a pig. That's exactly right. Now go to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. This is, this is a good one right here. Ephesians chapter 4. And verse number 27. I'll give me another swig of water. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 27. Let's read it together. Neither give place to the devil. Well, we're going to have the devil over for supper tonight. We're going to set a place for him at our table. We're going to welcome him in. And we're going to sit and we're going to have a fellowship. We're going to call it the fall festival. We're going to call it a fall festival, right. Or, you never do that. Or a trunk or treat. Why are you giving him a place? Why are you giving the things of the devil a place in your home and in your church and in your ministry? Why are you doing that? Well, you know, my people, they need some activities. Let them go to the bowling alley. You want to give them an activity? Give them Sukkot. Give them the Feast of Tabernacles. Give them the Feast of Trumpets. Give them the Feast of... Give them the things that God told, uh, uh, told, told us to give. You want to give your people activities? Give them the things that God said for us to have. Not the things of the devil. Neither give place 
to the devil. Now, how many of it that we live in Copperhead country? There's Copperheads around around this place, and 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 that's why I don't kill my black snakes. I of course I hadn't seen none this year, but um. We, we just don't we just don't mess with our our black snakes because they take care of our copperheads. How many of you go bring a copperhead in your house as a pet? I bring copperhead in my house and I and I'm I'm just gonna pet him. No, you're not. You're gonna you're gonna cut his head off with a shovel. But when we allow Halloween and trunk or treats and Halloween parties and festivals and 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 dress up times and and I love I love this one. Well, you know, we're just going to dress up like Bible characters. Did you know the demon act of Gadara was a Bible character? Did you know the witch of Endor was a Bible character? Did you know that Hasatan, Satan, the devil, is a Bible character? Did you know harlots and whoremongers and pedophiles and, and, and homosexuals are Bible characters? Did you know that? Did you know axe murderers are Bible characters? Did you know that God deniers and God haters are Bible characters? You can't, you can't powder coat it. Can't do it. All right, First Thessalonians. So we're just going to cruise on through First Thessalonians chapter five. First Thessalonians chapter five and verse number twenty-two. Uh, how, how's my time, Miss Sharon? All right, First Thessalonians chapter five, verse number twenty-two. This is another good one. These these are verses that you need to go back and you need to highlight in your Bible. You need to highlight them. You need to make posters of them. You need to put them on on your walls. Write them on the doorposts. Put them on your bathroom mirror so you can remember them. First Thessalonians 5, verse 22. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Yeah, write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And I'm going to ask a really hard question. I'm going to give you a few minutes to, to answer. How much is all? <laughs> the, the, the Jeopardy song. all appearance of evil remember that remember that verse of scripture that we read back in exodus chapter 20 you don't have to turn there but i'm just going to read it to you again in exodus chapter 20 and verse number two when he said i mean i mean exodus chapter 23 uh, and verse number two where he says thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil and here Paul says, abstain from all appearance of evil. How much is all? All. Hmm, let me think. Right, Brother Daniel. Right. Abstain from all appearance of evil. If it looks evil, don't do it. If it looks evil, don't do it. You better off leaving it alone. Uh, go over to James chapter 4. James chapter 4. <clears throat> James chapter 4 and verse number 7. I put music to this verse. Pretty simple. Yeah, I think so. James 4, 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God or to Elohim resist the devil and he will flee from you submit yourselves therefore to God submit yourselves therefore to God submit yourselves therefore to God resist the devil and he will flee from you but no we don't resist him we invite him in we invite him into our churches. We invite all in the name of religion, all in the name of fun, all in the name of allowing people to come in and making friendship with the world. That's right. Friendship with the world is an enemy with, with Elohim. We need to get serious about this stuff, folks. Have you not seen the evil in the world? Have you not seen the wickedness and the ungodliness in the world? You know, you know why they started doing trunk or treats? Anybody know why? Because of all the danger of people of children going house to house. House to house knocking on the door. There's a historical reference to that too, but I'm not going to get into it. You're, you, you need to study it for yourself. All of this is on the uh, internet. All of this is in encyclopedias. None of this is hidden. None of this is made up. 
But these children would go door to door, house to house, and they'd get accosted. They would get get uh, uh, poison candy. They'd get apples with razor blades stuck in them and candies with pins in them because people were wicked and people were evil. And so the Christians said, oh, we've got to do something and we got to make it safe for our children. So we're going to have a trunk or treat at the church and we're going to make it spiritual and we're going to make it religious and we're going to make it safe and we're going to give glory to God while we're letting you pass by in your costumes and your outfits. It's exactly what they did. Golden calf. Golden calf. Golden calf. Or some of you may not do truck or treat or trick or treating, but you cut out them jack o' lanterns and you put them jack o' lanterns on your on your front front porch. You, you know, cut out that smile. You know, the Christian thing is now. You know, Christianity is like a is like a pumpkin. You know, you cut the top out of it. Jesus, you know, cut cut us open and took out all the gooey stuff and all the bad stuff, and then he carved a smile on our face and he put a light in us and allowed us to shine for the world to see. That's a bunch of garbage. That's a bunch of garbage. Christians have bought into that and they're, 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 they're mixing the things of the world and the things of Satanism and ungodliness and wickedness and trying to make it Christian. We need to get out of this mess and get back to the Word of God. 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. I'm almost done. Told you I was just going to stick. This is about a three-part message. It took me about 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 an hour and a half on Sunday mornings, uh, and then about an hour on Sunday nights to preach this. First John chapter four, <clears throat> verse number one, beloved. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of Elohim, because many false prophets and false preachers and false teachers and false evangelists have gone out into the world. If you're at a church right now, if you're going to a church right now and your pastor says it's okay to, to celebrate Halloween, you need to pack your bags and you need to get out. If you're going to a church right now where they're sponsoring trunk or treat and they're sponsoring the, thing, the things of wickedness and ungodliness that goes, goes contrary to God's word while you're sitting here saying, I believe in Jesus and oh, how I love, love Jesus and, and all of the, these things, you need to get out. You need to get out and get out now. Don't even go back. Don't go back. Like I did at that haunted house. That night, there was, there was over 300 people in line that night. Over 300 people in line that night. I stopped halfway through. We took a break. When I walked out the door, everybody said, what are we going to do? Where are you going? I was Dracula. I was the main, main attraction. I walked out the door and said, I ain't coming back. I got down in the parking lot. I begged God to forgive me, and I never went back. You need to get out. You need to get out now. If, you're, if you love, love God and you love the things of God and you love God's Word and you love God's Son, you need, you need to get out and get out now. Because we have played too many games. There's too many little hell holes around our communities called churches with their steeples, their obelisks on top of their building giving honor and homage to Satan. All in the name of Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran, Protestant, independent, non-denominational Christian. Get out and get out now. 1 John chapter 4 verse number 2. Hereby know we the spirit of Elohim. Or a spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Yeshua and Messiah, Jesus Christ, is coming to the flesh is of God. Now I want you to go back to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter number 4. <clears throat> I'm going to end with this one. Yeah, Brother Daniel, I get to Christmas later, amen? I got to wait on December to get on that one. I need to get a little bit closer. Probably the middle of, the month, middle, middle of December. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times 
Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. My friend, there's nothing spiritual and nothing biblical about Halloween. There's nothing Christian. I used to say, I used to say, ain't nobody going to get saved at a haunted house. <laughs> but I got right with God at a haunted house, okay? That was after I had heard a message on Halloween. Heard it on Sunday and on Thursday night. I got under so much conviction I had to get out. Listen to me. Listen to me. It's important. It's important to understand this. Halloween is not a biblical holiday. It is by God's own definition, by Yahweh's own definition. It is an abomination. It is something that he hates. It is something that he does not approve of. You say, well, that was the Old Testament. No, I gave you more New Testament writings than I did Old. I could have given you more in the Old. But we have the whole Bible as our witness. The whole Bible as our witness. And my friend, my prayer for you tonight is that you will open up your eyes and open up your Bible. And you'll pay attention to what's going on. And you'll look around. And understand, remember, remember when the when the young disciple uh, said uh, said uh, I would follow you, but but my father died, and 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 Yeshua said, let the dead bury the dead. He was the Lord of the living. Let me tell you something. There's nothing spiritual about graves, and coffins. And, and and Walking Dead. You watch this garbage on, on TV, The Walking Dead? That's one of the hottest TV shows in the country. Why? Because it focuses on, on necromancy and talking with demons and dealing with the dead. Okay? Brother Paul put Ezekiel twenty two twenty six. 26. Let me, let me look at that real quick. Ezekiel 22, verse 26. <clears throat> Ezekiel 22, and verse 26, her priests, thank you, Brother Paul, her priests have violated my law. Well, we're not under the law anymore. Well, evidently what Paul said we are. Her priests have violated my law. That word law, by the way, is Torah. Look in your concordance. And have profaned mine holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and the profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean and have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths and I am profaned among them. That's it right there. That is it in a nut nutshell. Preachers, pastors, evangelists have gotten on board and now they're nothing more than modern day prophets of Baal or Baal as you call him. Prophets of Remphan, prophets of Molech, prophets of the devil while standing in the pul pulpits promoting a, a godless, lawless, uh, uh, law-breaking Messiah. All in the name of oh how I love Jesus. Thank you brother Paul. That is it. My prayer for you is that you'll get out and that you'll get out now. Don't wait. For the sake of your family, for the sake of, well, my children won't understand. Yes, yes, they will. If you sit them down, explain to them, we explained it to our children, or our, we, we, we only had one child when we quit. We raised our children and they understood every year. Took them out of school. Took them out of school every year. Not not doing doing this, and we explained to them, taught them. Now my children are teaching it to their children. We've got to break the cycle. It's time to stop. For the sake of your children, for the sake of your home, for the sake of your mind, and for the sake of your heart, and for the sake of your eternal soul, for the sake of you, get out and stop right now. Put it away. Well, I've already decorated. Rip it down. Burn it. Throw it in the garbage can. Dump the, dump the candy. 
Well, well, we like to give out tracts. Uh uh. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Neither give place to the devil. Leave your lights off. Get, uh, lock, lock the doors. Block the driveway. Put a sign out that says, Stay out. We don't celebrate. Period. Do, do whatever you need to do. But stop now. Put it away. Be done. And God will bless you for it. Just that simple. Father, I pray in Yeshua's name that you will bless the message tonight, that it will be an encouragement and a help to those in need. Thank you for all those that joined us tonight. May your word not return void, but may it accomplish exactly what it set out to do. Father, we love you and thank you and praise you. May you forgive us of our failure, forgive us of our sin, forgive our country, our nation of its sin and wickedness. And Father, forgive professing believers the wickedness that they participated in. Father, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Bring us to a place of repentance that we may turn from our wicked ways and that we may seek after you. For it is in the name of Yeshua Messiah, our Savior, Master, and Lord, we pray. Amen. We love you. Thank you. 